Hello everyone and welcome back to Rebel Brick. Uh, today we're really going to be looking at the newish set. I mean it, it didn't just come out uh, but it, it just came out recently um, of Yavin 4. So the set itself pretty nice. It does come with a, uh, a couple figures. In the front we actually have some rotating turrets that we can use to help defend the base. Uh, we have a gentleman here who can run pilots to their ships, which is wonderful. I love the fact that we actually get some more of the uh, kind of marine helmets uh, that you would see on uh, like 10 out of 4 and that were very big on the base on Yavid 4 when we were there. I'm going to move some of my Y-wings out of the way so we can turn this around and then one of my wings falls off. I don't know what's going on there. Um, Okay, let me move him out of the way, and I will flip this around. So, Easter eggs and everything else that are in here, we actually have one of the trees that they would have had a sentry sitting up in, and of course I've got our pilot here. Um, there is another gentleman with the same type of helmet. I'm trying to figure where I misplaced him. I must have put him just off to the side. I know he's going to be serious. All right. So here's here's our our gentleman here. He does have some uh, looks like micro binoculars or quad knocks or whatever you want to call them. Um, quad knocks is actually a newer term for this. Uh, originally, um, they were just kind of binoculars. It wasn't a real big deal, and I kind of really did this, didn't I? Okay. As I'm messing things up as usual, which is all fun. So we get we can have him sitting up in the air. He can look for any incoming planes, uh, well, starships. If you remember, he was in the in this position when they were launching the X wings, and then uh, he had that that display readout when the Millennium Falcon had first came in to Yavin Four. Um, as you notice, this can move out a little bit, so if you need to move it out so you can get some figures in down below here, you can do that. We do have a bottom level. Um, this is more of just a utility area. We do have some cabinets underneath here. Um, we have a display showing where the Death Star is in relative um, orbit for Yavin 4. So we got 3PO, we got R2 sitting here, we have Han, Luke, and Leia in the hall, or what they have for the hall, uh, where they're getting their um, awards. We have a radar station all the way up on top. Down below here, and I can take this off. So now we have a computer station for our gunnery area. We have a box here that would probably be a power unit uh, to help supply power to the to our blasters. Um, this is all pretty much stationary. Uh, we do have a conference room right here for our pilots to get uh, their briefing. And the briefing that's in the background is actually for going up against the Death Star. Uh, it's pretty pretty neat. We do have two pilots, so we can have one pilot going in there, and we can have another pilot for down and above, down and around. We do have a different R2 droid. Um, he does pretty good for for print. I don't know. I'm hoping I'm getting this right. I'm not looking at my computer. I'm looking at the at the droid. It has a pretty good print here. I like how the head is. I mean, it's a pretty standard. There's no print on the back side. It is nice. I always enjoy getting more droids, different varieties, different colors, all that stuff. Um, of course, we have Chewy, and I believe that is General Do Dodonna. Um, some of the characters we don't get a lot of. Um, all right. This is pretty stationary in here. I'm not going to try and take that out. I believe it's actually locked in. I put this together a couple days ago. Um, I just haven't gotten around to actually having a video on it. 
And then we have a micro build or, or a mid build maybe, I don't know how you want to call it, of a Y-Wing. Uh, and of course, as you can see, I have my, my other Y-Wings out here. So I have three old Y-Wings um, to kind of showcase with this. Um, trying to get this on here without breaking anything. I get a light bulb flashing, so it tells me that it's probably on the verge of dying. Wonderful. All right, we have two landing um, markers. Uh, the nice thing and about this is this can actually lift up. And I'm trying to remember which direction it lifts up. I think it's this way, so I can lift that up, and you can actually store maybe somebody's weapons or something like that underneath there, and you could have people riding on there. Uh, this is exactly how they had him running. Uh, the guy was standing up there. He actually had a foot pedal for the gas. So that's how that one had worked. Uh, very kind of simplistic design. Uh, I think it was just a, a battery cart that they had worked up that way originally. Um, you do have room for the droid to go in here and you do have the cockpit. The cockpit does not tilt up or back. It actually comes off entirely. So in order to get this off, it actually pops off. Uh, the figure does fit in there okay, I believe. Let me grab one of the guys here. Let's see. And of course, they probably won't have their blaster in hand. Or usually what I do is I have a tendency of I'll lift the blaster up a little bit so I can, until I can tilt it. Or swing it around so that way they have it in their hand. Oh, come on, you. All right. There. And then we could put that on top. And with a blaster, it does not want to close. So I will have to take the blaster out of his hand. I feel like I'm taking his, his pride and joy away. All right. Um, so we can get them in there. Um, it's not a bad build. And this does work, I mean, because this is to a size that we can actually get through there. But that's where my problem kind of comes in. For me, this isn't going to be a Yavin 4. Um, if you watch our role-playing game, this is actually going to become my new Jedi Temple, based off of the structures on Yavin 4. Um, but I think it would fit a little bit better for that for me. Now... For people that want to display this, this is a nice looking build. I do not have any issues with that. I just look at it in, in my own silly perspective. Um, because I do role playing games and everything else. And seeing that we're doing our solo campaign. Uh, this is going to be... It is uh, sturdy enough I can pick it up here. But this is going to be essentially our new Jedi Temple. When, when you see this um, and I think having a big door like this is fine maybe you can get a couple vehicles in there um, but when we start looking at our actual Y-Wings it doesn't work out quite as well I'm going to set these off to the side and I'll kind of show you the Y-Wings that I have here just really briefly uh, this one I don't think is a hundred percent correct but this was the very first one that they had done over 20 some years ago. I think it's what, over 25 years ago? And I know it had been broken apart and I put it back together and I know it's not 100% correct, but it's as close as I could get it. Uh, I do not have the instructions for it anymore, so I, I recognize that it's probably not built 100% of what it's supposed to be. It is pretty good though. We do have an R2 unit in here, the pilots in here. Um, we have the big cannons, our uh, ion cannons. We have regular cannons, ion cannons, and of course this is a bomber. Um, when we flipped this over, we were using just regular little struts here for that, and that's about all it really was. Um, and it was pretty good. I, you know, no no issues with it, no problems, no nothing. Um, and it sat there, and then unfortunately, I, I know that uh, in the process, I had moved to this house because we had a different house at the time. So I know things kind of got shoved in boxes and torn apart and stuff like that in our move. Um, but it is what it is. 
So that was the first one they did. Then they came up with this one. I know that there's one or two of them along the way that I missed. Um, I just was not... As much as I love Legos and I love building, um, I was centering a little bit more on getting regular RPG miniatures and minifigures and, and stuff like that. Not so much on the Lego stuff at the time. So I re realized I missed a big opportunity to get from the Clone Wars what they had for a Y-Wing with all the panels on it. And it did look very nice. So um, I have no one to blame but myself on that, uh, just as the way things had turned out. Of course, we have our ion cannons. It is a little bit uh, smaller. And then we have our blasters up here, and we have our droid, and this time he's turned sideways. Um, one thing I really want to note, there are two different variations of the Y-Wing. Um, these are actually called Lone Scouts. So these are Y-Wing Lone Scouts. Um, you only have the one pilot, and then you have the droid. Now, a standard Y-Wing is actually meant to have two people in there, as well as the droid. Um, that's your more combat version of it. They all had hyperdrives, they all had the same capabilities, it's just that one actually had someone in the back turret, um, so that way they could actually man the blaster cannons, uh, the ion cannons, whatever you had outfitted it with, typically it was ion cannons and the blasters in the nose. Um, this one was from uh, the last... The last one out of the trilogy, so that would have been uh, The Rise of Skywalker. I'm trying to remember all the names. So this one actually has more of a Ralph McCorn look to it, because that's who originally drew a lot of the sketch arts that, that they use for trying to come up with the models for Star Wars and that. So kind of going off of what he had created, um, we do not have room for a second person. I don't... Well, it does... No, it doesn't. This is a longer version, but it's still a, like, it, it's an extended uh, Lone Scout. So, uh, they had the character here. I do not remember her name, but we do have a pilot in there. Um, has a nice paint job. The whole thing to me, what kind of loses a little bit is when I look at it hit straight on. Um, this looks very very uh, flimsy-ish <laughs> looking at this especially when I look at what they had done on this one this one was all nicely beefed up in that for combat so if you were to sit there and think about things in in this regard and this is where my mind always goes this was probably an early, early prototype that they had fixed up or whatever else and the, the call it that, not a problem. That's how things had gone, of course. You know, on the first one I showed you, that's when they first started doing this. You know, we did not have things as contoured ni as nicely in LEGO when we first started doing our Star Wars stuff. It was a little bit blockier and all that than, than where we are today. Um, it is really nice to see how things have progressed, how things have kind of smoothed the lines and bulked up in certain areas and, and really had, had changed in others. So uh, the ability that we have today, the different parts that are available that we didn't even have back then, you know, it's, it's really interesting to see what we can do. And there's a lot more technic brought into all of this stuff today than what we originally would use way back when. Um, so going back or you know finishing up with our Y wings you know looking at Yavin 4 it is a fairly expensive set um, I think if you have a, a really good hardcore collector you're probably going to want to pick it up um, if you're looking at it for the kids it's really expensive um, I don't know who, who would pick it up for their kids. I don't know who's all got the, the funds for, for this for their kids. But, um, you know, it, it is very nice. There's a lot of playability to it and all that stuff. But, uh, you know, 
That would be a hard call. Uh, I know I probably wouldn't pick it up for my kids because, I mean, we don't typically have that much money for, for gifts and everything else for not, not something like this for our kids. So, um, you know, when you start looking at a, over a hundred dollars for, for a set or something like that, you know, that's not something that we typically do, but there again, keep in mind, I'm in, in, I'm in small town America here in Wisconsin. Um, and when you start looking at at the coasts, I know you you know anyone that's out there. You guys pay a lot more for things out there than I do. So maybe a hundred dollars isn't all that much because you you're used to having having to spend that much money on on things. So I don't know. Um, but here in the Midwest, hundred dollars goes usually a little bit farther than that. Um, but that's my two cents. Uh, it is a very nice build for those that are collectors. Those that really love the genre and, and the characters and everything else that have been built up over the years, you know, go for it. Like I said, for me, um, it was a chance to get this. I didn't have the chance at the time because it just wasn't something that, that was even open to me, you know, because uh, dealing with other things uh, for like uh, the Mustafar uh, temple for Darth Vader. So uh, this one was, was my first chance of getting it and that's just probably how a lot of people are so you know if you're in a, a crux like that yeah you might want to pass on it and 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 that but if if you can afford it hey go for it um you know it all depends on what your hobbies are and what you like to do and and what you have going on in your life so with that being said thank you so very much for joining us today thanks for stopping by i hope you have a wonderful day and keep working